I think in in answer to the question about what called what drew me to Holy Cross, I think it was both my parents' example and witness um, uh, of their respect and admiration for the sisters and and what they did, and always the encouragement to me and to all my siblings really to to be respectful and and to value to see what they did as a value and. Um, so, so that I think uh, was really important. And then the sisters themselves, um, all the sisters that I had seemed so down to earth and so friendly and they seemed so genuinely caring uh, about uh, uh, students and, um, uh, and open and there for us no matter what, you know, what we needed or wanted. And, and so we always felt loved and, and uh, free to talk to them about anything. So the more I thought about it and I saw what they were doing, I thought, you know, this is something I think I would really like to do. So, um, so I filled out with their help, filled out papers and sent it in and, and was accepted. And off I went in September, I think it was 62. My first year was perhaps the greatest challenge that I had in my life. Um, I missed my family tremendously, my friends. I missed the ocean and the mountains and the warm sunshine of California. I missed my boyfriend and I missed the freedom of the adolescent youth of an 18 year old. Um, life in the postulate seemed so structured and so routine um, and to this 18 year old, it seemed like all we did was work, pray, and study. After surviving the postulate, however, um, I became a white veiled novice and my whole attitude seemed to, to lighten and change. And um, I was very happy. Um, religious life took on a, a, a new and a deeper meaning for me. And, um, and I really felt right at home. This continued um, through um, my second year novitiate and I was happily anticipating making um, first vows in about two months time. Um, the surprise that emerged was that I began to develop persistent kidney infections um, that required several hospitalizations and a limit uh, to my physical activities. Um, tests failed to uh, reveal the cause of the infections. And so my doctor uh, recommended to the Superior General that I go home for maybe six months to a year to see if my health would improve because they couldn't figure out what was causing this. After being home for almost a year, um, with no, no reoccurrences of the kidney infection, um, <clears throat> I did write back uh, to Mother Catherine Murray, who was still the Superior General, and, and asked uh, that I, re I could return. Um, and she said yes. So in, um, I returned in September of 1965. Then about after about four months, I guess, something we went around there, uh, my kidney infection started up again, and uh, the congregation, along with me, um, agreed that it, it just seemed like Holy Cross was not uh, the right place for me. Then somewhere in early 1969, and I still remember this very well, um, I had a dream that was <clears throat> so real that I couldn't stop thinking about it, and it kind of rocked my whole being. I dreamt that I was back in the congregation and it was so far from where my mind and my heart was that all I could do was laugh when I shared it with my boyfriend. And yet at the same time, it kept coming back to my thoughts. The biggest surprise of my life was that I did apply to return to the congregation in 1970. And Mother Olivet, the Superior General at that time, accepted me. 
I returned in um, 1970 um, for a third novitiate and a third band of bandmates. And I, this time I professed vows in um, 1977, perpetual vows. From the beginning of my life in Holy Cross, I, I was inspired by our founder, Basil Moreau, um, for his example of authentically trusting in the providence of God. Um, through all the suffering that he experienced from, from his own community, he never wavered in trusting that God's providence would sustain him um, through his many trials. Um, and as you know, he died separated from his original um, community. <clears throat> as I have reflected on my own journey in Holy Cross, I've come to see how the dark night of my comings and goings really was a gift, a kind of necessary formation that was preparing me for all the invitations and the challenges of my vocation in the years ahead. And it's I, I consider that now as I reflect on it to be a, a, a great gift and one that I am very grateful for. And it's impacted the way that I look at other trials and things that you go through, maybe things that don't go the way you want them to go now. Um, and I, that sustains me, that, that experience of God's providence and God's love for me. And I, it really does just help me in a, in a lot of ways. And then I think it helps me in terms of my, my ministry um, uh, as a therapist for other people who, who, who are dealing with struggles and difficulties. And I can speak out of a kind of experience and out of a real lived sense of heart and not just an intellectual theory about it. So I'm really grateful for everything and I'm, I'm grateful to st that I'm back in Holy Cross and that I've been able to, you know, I've come up to 50 years now, 50 plus years if you count those beginning times. So that's it.